Welcome back to the Soul Back Podcast. This is the R&B Podcast. Kyle here. I've got Tom and Ed with me. And guys, this is the most exciting episode of all time. We have Mario joining us on the podcast. Oh, wait. He canceled on us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, He'll be my. back. He got a little busy. Relax. I know you're all upset, Kyle, but we'll get him. I think most yeah. of our listeners know that this was going to be a big day for our boy Kyle. The only day would be bigger if it was Ashanti. So don't worry, player. He'll be back. We will do. A, we'll have a redo, but we have a good alternate. Trust. Yep, we do. Uh, Tom, we have your boy DJ Urban Philosopher, a good friend of yours. Really knowledgeable music fan, R and B fan. Been trying to get him on for a while. My guy from the Soul Village show, who DJed the show and hosted. So. Yeah, good to have him as part of the show for once. Awesome. Now, Mario will be back um, in the coming weeks. He's been out promoting his new single, which we will talk about in a bit after we go over some things. But, um, yeah, we'll have Mario soon. So anyone that was waiting for Mario on this, you'll just have to wait a little longer. But you'll be fine because we've all waited nine years for the album. So we'll be all right, guys. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Now, can we start off the podcast by uh, talking about some epic news? I guess. All right. Um, Stevie J and Faith Evans got married. Uh, are we, play? are we going to do this? Are we really going to do this? We're doing this. I mean, I just, wanted, <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. It was probably the most random thing I've ever read on the internet. Look, I need someone to go through and find your favorite R&B veteran because we've already lost one to Stevie J. We've lost another one to the freaking Birdman. Find your favorite R&B veteran. Hold them tight. Protect R&B veterans and stop letting them marry these weirdos and lames. Oh, my God. What do you mean weirdos and lames? Have Birdman and Stevie J not produced classic records? I don't, yes, Birdman has produced classic records, but he's also produced classic court cases. Ask how much money Lil Wayne has these days. Listen, man, wasn't cash money the biggest thing ever in the South? Um, yes. Well, there we go. <laughs> Case closed. Absolutely Tony Braxton, not. Tony Braxton, you did well for yourself. I if can't only man- wait. If only I Manny can't. Fresh was available at the time. <laughs> oh. Manny Fresh? Oh. All right. I can't wait Let's until music here. marries one of these little um, ratchets from a reality show so your heart can oh. be stomped on, too. <laughs> Where's Keith right. Sweat out there with his voice trying to holler at, like, college kids? First of all, first, as since you mentioned the king... I want to wish a very, as today that this is being recorded, is the day of birth that we were introduced to the OG of R&B. So happy birthday. It will be belated by the time this comes up. To King Keith himself. So thank you for that reminder. I'm ignoring the rest of the stuff you said, Tom. Well, (laughs) moving on. (laughs) All right. All right. All right. Uh, Can we get a we love you, Keith? Tom? Ed doesn't Ed doesn't do those. No, you do right, them. We love you, Keith. There you go. <laughs> and Mario, we know you couldn't make it, but we still love you too. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Let's let's talk about Mario. He dropped the new single, Drowning. Uh and we actually got an advanced copy of the album. Uh Ed, you start off talk about the single a little bit. That was a little uh it's a little different from Mario. It's very different from Mario. I remember um, as I was listening to the album, I didn't do an official review yet, but I always take notes as I write the kind of as I listen and go through. And I remember writing notes saying that, like, this sound is so experimental for him because it is just, it's not like a Mario song you've ever heard. It shows kind of a maturity and a kind of step into a new direction. But I don't hate it. I think there are a lot of fans that are going to be caught off guard by it. But I think it kind of works. I, and and if that is the sound that, if you're worried, like, is this what the whole album is going to sound like? It is more in line with the sound that he's going for the album than throwback Mario. This isn't Let Me Love You. So don't go into it thinking that this. It's an album that kind of branches out a little bit. We get a new sound or a darker sound. And 
Mario's doing his thing. Yeah, I listened to the single too, and Ed, I gotta admit, I was one of the people that was really looking for that next "Let Me Love You" because Mario's always put out one of those singles that kind of feels like that. Like he had "Crying Out for Me," um, he had "Somebody Else" with Nicki Minaj. It has that feel to it, and on this song and even the project, I didn't necessarily get that. And Mm-mm. but you also realize, like Tom, "Let Me Love You" came out 14 years ago. It's it would be unreasonable to expect him to make a song like that again. Well, right? I, feel, I feel like we do this all the time. We do this with Usher. We do this with Neo and many other artists. We expect them to all of a sudden be able to just come out and give us a sound that was equal to what they gave us decades ago. And maybe that's just uh, uh, how much we believe in these artists and know what they're capable of. But it's, uh, I guess I guess that's a positive. Like, if you believe Mario could still come out with a, song, a, a record like that, then you really believe in him as an artist, which I don't think is a negative thing to say. But, like, we always believe in Usher. We believe he can come out with another Confessions-type album. You know, Neo can come out with another, like, his his debut. So I put it in that category. And I don't think it's a negative thing, but it's it's just still unrealistic to expect, though. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I wouldn't call it a negative either, but I would say it's unrealistic. I've talked about this many times here and on my site on and in my reviews that it is kind of unfair when we – you fall in love with an artist for a certain sound, and then we get mad when they evolve, but it's unfair to try to pretend that you can turn the clock back. We're all different people. I'm not the same person I was in 2005 or whatever that song came out, so it's hard to expect an artist to be able to revisit a sound that's well over a decade old because not only have they matured as a person vocally, in other ways, it's different things, different stages in their life, and they want their music and art to reflect that. So I'm all for people branching out, doing different things. I get weird when they start following trends. That's a different conversation. But if they're doing something different to expand their sound, cool, let them roll with it. So I think sometimes fans got to give these artists the benefit of the doubt and let them try something new before you say, oh, that doesn't sound like something 25 years ago was trash. <laughs> Right. Um, speaking of Let Me Love You, Ed, Scott Storch is back. He's been on a press run talking about his comeback. He's been gone for a minute due to, like, drugs and stuff like that, but he is back. You love Scott Storch, mm. don't you? Uh-huh. I miss him, player. I must – You. everybody knows that I'm a Timberland apologist, and I'm still grouchy about his little spat that he had with Timbo back in the day. So I'm glad that Scott Storch cleaned up, but I'm still over here with the side eye dog. All right. <laughs> but, did, but did you know that he invented Neo Soul? <sighs> Says who? Right, Kyle? He, yeah, he said it in an interview. Well, I'll give you some context Context to his head. He was actually part of the Roots back in the day. And he produced the, the Roots record, You Got Me. So that was sort of like the starting point for Neo Soul. If he thinks that that is what invented Neo Soul, he needs to sit down because yes, there were soulful records before then, but a lot of people kind of kind of put the Neo Neo Soul kind of starting point with D'Angelo's first album, and that was way after some You Got Me. So sit down, Scott. Yeah, I'm actually <laughs> fact checking here, Kyle. You Got yeah. Me came out in like ninety eight, ninety nine, and D'Angelo yeah. was way before that. So how is he claiming that? <laughs> He's from Philly, man. He can do whatever he wants. He's from Philly? Well, he was... No, I think he was from New York, but he, like, moved to Philly to work Scott with... Scott Storch is from just, New York? Hold on. We got to check the Wikipedia facts on this. I have no idea. <laughs> no, Lord. And then we got to go to the all-knowing Wikipedia. No, he's born in Long Island and grew up in Philly. Interesting. There you go. He still has no idea what he's talking about, but, you know. Absolutely not. <laughs> Listen, we're, we're going to have Scott Storch on an upcoming podcast, too. You guys just wait. We're going to clear this all up. Oh, boy. I can't wait for that one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so let's talk about some more new music. So we talk about artists and wanting to see them evolve and, you know, not expect the same sound from decades ago. Well, Sierra put out her new song, Level Up, and it sounds like many other up-tempo records that she's put out in the last 10 years. And interestingly enough, historically, it hasn't necessarily translated into chart success, but this one seems to be doing very well. It's gone viral, the Level Up Challenge. Uh, because these days is always about the challenge. I mean, that's how, look at this 
ugh, ridiculous Drake song that is breaking all these records simply because people like to take videos of themselves dancing while their car is still moving down the street. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> but that's what, I mean, honestly, if you heard this song, if you heard a Sierra song, you heard every song. The old girl been making the same song for like 20 years, so it's a song, I guess. But that's what we're doing now, 2018. The new promotion is getting a challenge to pop off. So, yay for you, girl. And I will say this about Sierra. I mean, I'd say she's at the height of her popularity right now. So, I mean, how can you really argue the results? You might not like the music, but she's like a big-time celebrity, man. Oh, and she has been for the past couple years. She's been a pretty big kind of Instagram, social media celebrity. Do that in her and family, so can't hate on that. It only helped when she married Russell Wilson, though. I mean, that definitely helped e- elevate things. I mean, and if not you look only at someone, that, the whole yeah. situation around that marriage, because you know, with that ugh, that gremlin known as future and all that drama there, I think a lot of people sympathize with her, and it just made her even more beloved. And that's unfortunately where we're at these days. Her having a relationship with Future and Russell Wilson was like the best thing she could have done for her career. I mean, unfortunately, yep. that's what it comes to. It doesn't even matter about the music, unfortunately. But, I mean, that's where we're at, 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, the song is actually pretty catchy. It's, you know, it's it's all right. I, I can't hate on the song. And the video is actually very good. Sierra has been actually very good with her music videos over the course of her career. So, shout out to Sierra for that. Now, I have a couple more singles that I want to go through. And I'm stuck between two. I don't know which one to talk about first. But we're going to go with this one, Lloyd's new single, Caramel. The song is cool, but can we talk about that album cover, Ed? Oh, my gosh. No, we can't talk about that album cover. I don't know what's with your boy Lloyd and me and butt naked on album covers. Because first we got it on his mixtape. Now we got him standing in the middle of the street looking like a hitchhiker. As if he's got a guitar sitting on his junk, propping it up. So, <laughs> uh, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Well, that doesn't happen. It is what that, it is, Flair. That type of thing doesn't happen up north, man. I'm just being honest. Well, you couldn't happen up north. If you stood in the middle of the street, you'd be rogue. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, let's get back to the song, please. I thought the song was pretty decent. I know it's when I heard this song, I was like, "Oh, Kyle is gonna love this song." So it's it's definitely in his vein, and it's pretty catchy. It's pretty good. I think I like True better, but it's not bad at all for a first thing. Now, yeah. Kyle, you told us he has the potential to have the album of the year in 2018, R&B album of the year. And you know what? Based on the EP he put out, that's not a crazy thought. And based on what we've heard so far this year, why did you think that could be the case? I mean, that's that's exactly it. And look at, look at what's come out this year. Not a lot. Not a lot of quality, even just a lot of mediocre stuff. And Lloyd has... I don't think he's put out a great album in his career, but he's always had solid songs here and there. And I think um, that's continued. I think his sound, although it has evolved, it has been consistent. You can pick a song from, you know, his current stuff and look back at some of his older stuff and you can see that it, there's some continuity to it. And you can't say that for a lot of R&B artists these days. So I don't know. I, I just see great potential in this guy and um, um, him standing in the middle of the street with a guitar blocking his crotch, I think that's very brave of him, and I think it will show that he's ready to put out some great music. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> that's what it shows. I, <laughs> oh, man. Ed, can you imagine if Lloyd stood in the middle of the street and you were driving by, and then you stopped by and you saw him with that guitar, and he just started playing Hey Young Girl to you? Wouldn't you be amazed? Um, I would hope that he kept that guitar over his crotch and then pick it up and start serenading me because if so, I'm hitting the accelerator. I'm out. Listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to make the truest statement I've ever made on this podcast. Are you ready? No, oh, Lord. If that, if, that was, if that was a Keith Sweat album cover, you would be going oh, nuts boy. right now. Well, it depends on the locale. Oh, where, 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 you know, with the context is everything, dog. Oh, my God. Stop this, oh. my man. This is my man's birthday. We should be celebrating, not playing. <laughs> this is true. Happy birthday, Keith. We love you. We um, love you. 
Now let's talk about uh, another single here. Mary J. Blige dropped a new record, a disco sounding record. What do you guys think of that of, one? Yep, straight out of the seventies, and it's fine for what it is. I, you know, we talk about fan bases, the Beehive, and, and whatever you call Cardi B's things, and whatever. I'm gonna listen. This is the part of the podcast where I say send your hate tweets to E.T. Bowser. Mary J. stands are the worst on the internet. Oh, the worst. And they have already been proclaiming this the song of the year. And I thought the song was okay, but calm down. It's just a decent seventies disco standard. Doesn't reinvent the wheel at all. But they are ready to shed blood for those who diss Queen Mary. Tom, didn't this single just come out of nowhere? Like, there was no buzz yeah. or hype around it. They just threw it out. I mean, it's, it's a strange time for Mary. I mean, I really don't know what she's doing, to be honest, because her, her albums haven't been doing as well as they used to be. You know, she's been acting lately, and that's been doing really well. I mean, she did that, mm-hmm. uh, what was the name of the movie yet? I, I can't remember. Mudbound. Mudbound, yes. And then she got like a lot of acclaim for that. I thought she was going to be transitioning into more of acting and be successful there. And then, boom, a new single's out. It's like, I, I really don't know where Mary should go from here, but it was really interesting to see this song come out of nowhere like that. Yeah, it's it's definitely weird. Um, But we'll see what happens. I mean, her last album, actually, from what I remember, did pretty well. It had a couple of charting uh a song that charted on urban ac uh, i'll say i'll say one thing though kyle mary j i mean haters aside stands aside mary j's the queen are we ever going to really argue about new music from the queen i mean like we got to be happy that we're getting music right yeah oh yeah no question well, and i think that yep. goes back to my original point like i anything that mary does not put out garbage but it's weird that there's a fan base that says you don't rate this seven stars, we are going to destroy you. Like, calm right. down. Like, it's we we love Mary, but, you know, everything isn't the best thing that was ever breathed. To right. You. Yep. Um, got a couple of new singles that I want to go through still. And, you know, to avoid beating a dead horse, Tanashi put out a new song called Like I Used To. Um, yeah. Song sounds gonna... like something like she used to. Yeah, we know. We're yeah. not going to beat that horse. That that horse has been beaten enough. Um, a fan wanted us to mention June Diaries EP All of Us. So there's the mention. I'm right, just kidding. I actually listened to. The oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Play a call yourself. I actually listened to the EP. It was uh, it was you know I, I want to touch on this pretty quickly because June's Diary was signed, I believe, to Epic. I think it was under Wait, Kelly Rowland. Are they dropped? Did it get dropped? They're or? dropped. They dropped. Oh, so wow. They were on that label for a while, and no one knew what was going on. Then they got dropped, and they finally put out their EP, and I was expecting low-quality garbage, but it was actually a pretty good listen. So I'm you know, pretty I'll say, happy about I'll say that. one thing. That kind of sucks that they got dropped, because didn't they get signed based off of that show they were a part of? Yep. So they, they really didn't even get a fair shot. I mean, that's not cool. They didn't even get an album based off that that deal they got from the show. I mean, that's not cool. Well, Tom, sometimes life isn't fair. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, Estelle put out a new single. I haven't really had a chance to listen to that one yet, so we'll have to revisit that. I um, heard it. It wasn't then, bad. For I mean, it was one of those you know dreaded kind of reggae teen, tropical influence songs that we've heard a thousand times this summer. But it wasn't bad for what it was. Produced by Harmony well, Daniels, so it's fine. You, you uh, interviewed her, Kyle, and she told you about this reggae project. Yeah, she did. Um, yeah, she's working on a whole reggae project. So you can hear more of these type of records from her. I kind of like some of her more like traditional R&B records. I think she's been able to do some pretty cool things with that. I remember that record she had that Akon did. Uh, Thank You, was it, Tom? That was a good song. Oh, man. Great song. Classic, I'll say. Classic? That's a classic. Come on. Ed, is that oh, yeah, I don't get, 
I am. Don't, I am, don't ask. I am don't ask. I'm recusing myself from this conversation because I don't Listen. want to get into like two hours and something about. Ed will classic. call. Ed will call anything from the '90s a classic, and nothing past the oh. '90s a classic. So that's oh, all you need. Oh, now you, here we go. Now look here, player. <laughs> look here. Let me let me put this on the line right quick before we get back on track. Tom, when did you start listening to R&B? I know the answer, so don't lie. In the late '90s. Uh huh. Kyle, what song, what albums, when you fell in love with R&B, listening in the car with your mom, which <laughs> album? Mariah Carey, Daydream. And what else? Tony Braxton, Secret. What year they came out? 1996. I rest I... my case. Hold on a second. <laughs> we're we're going to revisit this on a later podcast. We we can't do this right now. <laughs> Tom's running short on time. It was an era with classic music. <laughs> Both of you became fans because of the music that came out in the era. Where is the lie? What? What? <laughs> I, I don't understand I the argument. The, I, I didn't say that was the only era with classic music. I said it was an, al, an era filled Listen, with classic music. His mom... Fans. His mom forced him to listen to R&B. Counts as me oh, finding it my by myself. Goodness. He had no forced choice. To, he forced to fall in love with it. He was forced to fall in love with it. If his mom was playing some old garbage, he'd be like, oh, I hate this music. I'll never listen to it again for the rest of my life. This is true. This all came up from a Stell thank you song, which is, you been you like the song, Ed. Yes, I like the song. I don't know how we got on this, but you got me turned up. You know how I feel, Tom. <laughs> well, Tom's throwing the classic word around again, so there you have it. Oh, yeah, that's I what said it was. Cla- I said classic to one song. Like, when do I ever say classic? That's true. Can we move on, I, please? I don't, please, okay, please move on. on. My pressure is up. Where are my pills? <laughs> All right. I think both of you guys need some medicine. So we're going to talk about this queen... Nigel, is that how you pronounce her name? Shout out to Zeppelin, who put us on with this record, because uh, I don't think any of us really paid attention to it. And uh, whether you believe it or not, a Play a Please recipient, let us know about it. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, we gotta, we, can we talk we about it? Remo- we got to remove the Play a Please from his profile. It's like when you get arrested for a crime, and then you like do something, <laughs> and then they remove it from your, your portfolio or whatever. So like that's gone from his portfolio. He made up. All right. Oh, okay. I missed that episode, so I don't know if we can remove it or not. He did but... his community service. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> he he gave back to R&B. But back to the song. I did listen to the song. A lot of the um, kids that I work with love it. They were like, you're going to love it. You got to listen to it. And most of the time they say that I hate it. But I actually didn't hate this song. I thought just she has a lot of promise. Hmm. Well, what, about you, what about you, Tom? Have you... Heard about her buzzing on the internet? I know. No, I haven't on... listened to it. I, okay. You know, I had it. I talked to Zeppelin today about her actually, and I was like, you know, we should try to get her for an interview. And he's like, oh no, she's too big. Like it's it's too oh. late. She's on the Breakfast Club. No, he he said her interview with the Breakfast Club's coming out this week. It's too late. Oh, she's on the Breakfast Club. Jeez. Yeah. He's I like she's she a she's an internet videos. celebrity. He said. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. Well, but I haven't seen her on, on sites that I follow, like Vibe and Wrap Up and all those. Like, I haven't even heard about, much about her at all. So I thought she was still kind of bubbling under the radar. But I was told it's, otherwise, so. Clea, it's a different era. I mean, if my if these kids are like 14, 15, they, all they do is watch YouTube. So when they were yeah. telling me about her, I knew she had to be a YouTube star. And that's where she started. And you can really blow up if you hit the right thing. And I guess she did. Dude, she's got a great story, too, actually. She's 22, and she's already been divorced. Wow. That type of thing Damn. is going to make her blow up. Watch. She'll be on Oprah. I can already see it. Oh, yes, she will. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be the new star to be if she keeps that up. Watch. Let's just watch. All right. Well, while you guys are watching, uh, can we talk about some more new music here? I know you guys love new R&B music because we don't get Wait, a lot. Hold on, Kyle. I have a question for you guys, actually. Um, how yeah, okay. do you compare an artist like Queen Najia to like a Georgia Smith? Ooh. 
No, you I mean, really l- l- let me say just these are new artists I've heard of recently that are kind of be- becoming popular. Right. Like, are these in the I, same yeah, category? I don't um, think so. No, and this is what, and to me, this is what's exciting because we have become, R&B has been whittled down so much that if you are an R&B artist, you get thrown into a box, and that box contains everybody. And it's not like it was decades ago where you have a neo-soul artist and you have a R&B slash pop artist or kind of a more raunchy R&B-ish artist with a hip-hop edge. There are different levels of R&B, and I love that we're kind of getting back to that now with some of this influx of talent from the U.K., and then we've got the, the kind of, I don't know, Internet stars that are doing their thing and they're channeling their story through their music. I like that even though they're all still under the same umbrella, there's different facets of it. To me, that's what makes the music fun and fresh and different and just different different ingredients to the pot. It just makes the meal much more satisfying than when everything tastes the same. On a side note, Georgia Smith is very attractive. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed. <sighs> I, I think I like noticed, man. though. Okay. Oh, Sorry. Can um, I Google this right now? Yes, you can. I this picture is- her looking like Brave Williams. I don't know why. Not really. No. I, think she's, look, she's a, I like her better than Brave. Not that Brave is unattractive. She's wait, pretty, pretty. Wait, whoa. This is the person? Whoa. That's not what I expected. All right, moving no, you on. Brave Williams. <laughs> yeah. <I did>. Right. <laughs> we, we Wait, know. this is an R and B singer? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I can't imagine this person singing R and B for this worth. Are What's you sure on the you're looking at the right person? Maybe not, actually. Wait, She's hold on. Like an R and B singer to me? She's like mini shot A. Who okay, I'll look it up another about? time. I don't know. We'll be talking about once Tom is done with his Googling. Listen, Kyle, do you remember one time someone told me to check my Wikipedia facts on an interview? I still yes. remember that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, what? We'll talk that about that. Wor- that was one of the worst dishes I ever got, but continuing on. Yeah. Oh, continuing on. Doing? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, so we have three albums that uh, I want to talk about that are coming out or have came out already. But before I get into that, can we give a quick shout out to Tom's new favorite female artist, Anna Moore? Yeah. Thank you. I was going to bring that up. Yes. Good for you for bringing that up. Yeah. I mean, listen, I listen to thousands of submissions a year and uh, I happened to find this one. And listen, I almost gave up listening to these submissions because as we've gotten into 2018, People send trap music, rap music to me. I'm like, well, why would you send this to me? You know I got soul. But, man, this girl is so talented. The music just really was like a throwback and nothing like that I've heard in a while. So thank you so much for sending it in. I sent her some words of encouragement so she doesn't give up because I know how it is now. And, man, Ed, you, I sent this to you guys. Ed, you liked it, right? I absolutely adored it. And you sent me her single, but I listened to her EP. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be posting it on um, my site and on my channels. Great. Soon. That's amazing. It's called, her name is Anna Moore, and her EP, I think, is called One Day. It is a yep. fantastic piece of work, y'all. It's like five or six songs. It won't take you long. Stop listening to freaking Boot Up and the In My Feelings Challenge for a half hour. <laughs> Check out some new music. And you, if you like R&B, you will be impressed. I was very, very impressed. And y'all know I don't impress easy. And I think it's important to remind y'all to give new artists a chance. I hate when somebody new yeah. drops and y'all be on that, Harpo, who this? Well, let Harpo tell you who this is. Because if we want this genre to thrive and survive, we got to be open to these new voices and help put them on. We can't just expect someone from 30 years ago to come out of the blue and save us all when we've got lots of hungry you artists out here pushing the genre forward. So, Adam Moore, shout out to the homie. I am a fan. We are a fan. We will help spread the word. Look at that. Absolutely, man. And, and now, you know, it, it's crazy, man. We don't hear many artists like this nowadays. They Most artists, young artists, emulate what's on radio. They try to sound more current. 
I'm just happy she's doing like what she feels and, and making something fresh and different. So, Anna Moore, I hope you continue doing what you're doing. And I'd love to hear more music like this from, from any artist, but it's, it's really rare right now, guys. Very rare. We love you, Anna Moore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we had to put that out there. Okay. So we got three albums that I want to talk about, and we might have to test the waters on this one, Ed. Tom, have you listened to the Internet's new album, Hive Mind? Yes, I, I listened to it just earlier today, guys. Oh, you no, did? I didn't. No, I didn't. Oh, Come on. Get, go away. <laughs> Ed? Oh, my God. Yes, I listened to it. You can find a review on Soul and Stereo. I'm glad one of us here got good sense. Um, if you're a fan of Ego Death, their previous album, I think you'll like this too. It's not quite as good, but it's still pretty solid. It's one of those albums you throw on, you just let play all the way through, you go clean your house while it's rocking. It's a pretty <laughs> solid record. I'm a fan. Um, so we might have to do like a special edition of the podcast uh, with Barry Bars to talk about this album a little more. Uh, Tom, I know Barry Bars. Good. Yeah, we I love mean... you. <laughs> you love Barry Bars now? Jeez. Oh, uh, boy. Jeez. Are you still drunk from last night, man? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Off the right. screwdrivers, man, and uh, I don't know what, that, what else you were drinking. I don't know. He Sour was turned up in that wet, and I was like, what is in the world? That was bad. <laughs> um, all right. Sade is coming back, Ed. You love Sade. Yes. Sade is coming back, and my man Pebo is so thirsty, he put out a song called Looking for Sade. <laughs> yes, he did. Yep. Wow. And I'm, Sade is one of those artists that literally puts out one album a generation. She will put out an album like one every 15 years. So every time I feel like she comes back, there's a whole generation of fans that's like, who this lady? And she has to reintroduce herself. But... She always, first of all, she doesn't age. She's like a freaking vampire. She looks exactly the same. She's like 60, and she looks exactly the same. And her music has always been incredible. Like, she, I don't know what she has, but she has the fountain of youth in her backyard because she just does not age. So we will be looking for her, and Peebo will probably be peeking behind the blinds to find her. Peebo. What's up with that? Peebo will <laughs> holler at you, Sade. <laughs> Wait, does that Listen. deserve a play of please, or is he just shooting his shot here? Oh, he's shooting his shot, but... I mean, oh, I, my I, God. Is, is actually, she married? Yeah. Is she married? I thought she was. She's so mysterious. Knows. Who knows? She's out in the woods somewhere uh, in London. I don't know, man. I feel uh. like she just emerges from, like, she's like a comet, like Haley's Comet. Like, she just comes out of the fog and just walks to Earth for one year and then disappears for 20 years. Listen, we got to give a shout out though to our friends at Rated R and B because they were the ones who who got the scoop on that. They interviewed someone in the band of Sade, and got and figured out that she's working on a new album. The group was working. Sade is a group, first of all. It's yeah. the name of the lead singer and a group. But they interviewed them. I mean, they might post Big Baby, uh, Drum, whatever his name is, new, his <laughs> new EP. But <laughs> but you know. They do. They did their research on this one, so shout out to Ray's R and B. Oh Absolutely. my God! Man, <laughs> Tom, what a random shade. If, if we get in trouble, it's all your fault. I'm just putting it out there. What, I was giving them props, though. Big babies. Okay. Um, well, they posted that. I yeah. mean, that's a fact. It's, it's on the site, though. All right, all right. But yeah, you're right. They did break the news about the shot A project. But Tom, you broke some news as well. About this Drew Hill jazz play, I think. Well, What's going on? I don't know if that's considered breaking news or more so no one's really paying attention, but Clea, our, our friend, uh, Smokey and Black, Rest in Peace, uh, Static, they've been touring with Drew Hill for the past few months now. And uh, our friend Nokio, who was on this podcast a few months ago, said, uh, you know, jazz is recovering from uh, health issues and working on himself and that type of thing. So we're like, okay. Play will fill in, you know, until Jazz is, is healthy again. Come to find out that Playa has been in the studio recording music with Drew Hill. And then we then we get a new single from Jazz. I mean, what the heck is going on? I mean, Ed, I what, what is going 
Clay, I don't know. I will say that I am very interested in how this folds out because Drew and Play are two of my favorite groups. Jazz, right. we have been screaming for a jazz solo album since 2000 that has never materialized. Yep. So that seems like it might be happening. This is weird. And it might, we might be making it more. We might be making it more about drama than it really is. Maybe everything is cool, but it just the optics are pretty weird. But I like Jazz's new single. I love the thought of Player and the members of Drew Hill together. I don't know if it's going to be like the NWO when they had the black and white and the red and white. Oh what? man! But <laughs> either way, we're gonna get some good music out of it. So I'm Kyle. Hurt. Kyle, can I speculate? Yep. yep. Okay, if I can speculate. I feel like Jazz is pissed off at the group for bringing Play on tour and bringing them in the studio. And he's like, all right, I'm on my own. I'm going to release my own solo project. I no. mean, maybe Play. No. But what do you mean, no? How could that not be the case? Because it doesn't, you're like making it, you're assuming that's the case. That doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Maybe Jazz just could not because he was, you know, we know that there have been rumors of health problems. Maybe he just couldn't get out on tour, but clearly his voice still works. So maybe he's like, while they're making that tour money, I'm going to go make me an album. And everybody's cool with it. It's not necessarily, I'm going to show them, I'm going to go platinum. You know who's not cool with it? I'm not cool with it. Oh, God. (laughs) This is not, Playa is not Drew Hill. You got Smokey wearing a shirt with a dragon on it now. That's not Drew Hill. That's Playa. I don't like it, guys. I want Jazz back in Drew Hill. I want Jazz back in Drew Hill, but I'm going to see. Let me see what the music sounds like. And if it sounds good, then we cool. That's what I'm always about. As long as everybody cool and the music is great, I'm good. Unless we're talking about Big Baby Drum. I don't know nothing else. Well, everyone's not cool because I'm not cool. And uh, my speculation still stands. Keith is not going to be cool with you after this um, rated R. <laughs> Listen, wow. I didn't diss them. They, they they were in a different lane than we are. Relax, Ed. I uh, know. I'm just stirring it up like you're stirring it up. Trying meanwhile, to more than Drew Hill and Player. Keith is about to shoot his guitar photo next week. All right. Now, first of all, how many times <laughs> I got to tell you? I have to finish the <laughs> podcast. I'm rolling to Atlanta to light the birthday candles on this man cake, and you're oh, here my with God. the kisses. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, Tom, I'm on Drew Hill's Wikipedia, and it says active member jazz. So your theory is wrong. Wikipedia. Based on Wikipedia. Community members can update Wikipedia. We can update that right now to say Smokey and Black are part of the active members. You, you know that, actually right? could I, do that. Can we do that? <laughs> you we can, can do you it right could now. literally do that. Listeners no, no. out there, we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing that live right now on the podcast. We are not I will doing be that. Part we, of no <laughs> Listen, somebody's writing a research paper on Drew Hill as we speak, and you're going to give them invalid facts. That's not good. So, Wait a second. Somebody's writing a it's... research paper on Drew Hill, so they go to Wikipedia. Is Wikipedia it's a just... legit source, guys? I think no. so. I what? think it is. It is. According to Wikipedia and Tom, anybody wearing a dragon shirt is part of Drew Hill. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Moving on. Please All right. Move Can on. we get into? Let's get into the play of please while Tom is editing Drew Hill's Wikipedia. This whole podcast yeah. is gonna play yeah. a please award. Drew Hill, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I give the play a please? And it hurts me, but I gotta do it. Can we give the play a please once again to Brandy Norwood? Oh no, my oh. God! Oh, she Your is your favorite like, artist. Uh, my favorite artist. She's got a PhD in play a please. Yeah. Wait, hold on. Did your mom used to play the Brandy album or no? Yes, yes. The Which second one, the, not the, the first one. Oh, not the, not the, first, not the debut? Damn. No. All right. Anyways, um, as you guys are, are all aware, Brandy is very shady on Instagram. She seems to like getting caught up in all of that. Uh, most recently, you know, the Essence Festival happened, I guess, two weeks ago now. Time flies. She was doing a performance. She was singing The Boy Is Mine. And at the end of the song, instead of saying the boy is mine, she said, the song is mine, referring to the fact that the song is actually hers and not Monica's. Why? 
I know why. Why? Because he missed shady boots. That's why. I thought we knew this. I know why. Because that's the type of thing. It's 2018. You need to be in the headlines any way you can, man. That got her in the headlines. It did get her in the headlines. You're right. And, and, and in a few weeks, we won't remember why she was in the headlines. We'll just remember we heard about Brandy. So, great marketing well, strategy. I, I want to add on to this conversation, though, because I went on Spotify and searched up Monica's Spotify page, and the song The Boy Is Mine is actually grayed out. You can't play it on Monica's playlist. So No way. I, I'm dead serious. No, Can that's I check that right I, now? I, I, that's true. I have seen that as well. That is true. How could that be? How is that possible, though? Because the song is actually Brandy's. There you go. It's on her album, though. Yeah, but uh, Spotify I, I, is weird about stuff like that. Like, it's always uh, right. Hold on. So there I'm are checking songs right that now. are sprayed out on many albums. Monica's album right. is called The Boy Is Mine, guys. I know what it's called, but, but I'm saying. But you can't play the song. Wait, hold on. It's I'm like, on there right now. It goes to right. It's, like you no, can't. it's playing. It's playing. I don't know. It's playing right now. I hear it playing. So it's I playing. have All seen right. it grayed out before. Like I, Kyle is correct. I've seen it grayed out before. I have no idea well, what's going on. I guess the song is both of theirs again. We love you it's guys. It's back. <laughs> we, <laughs> we still love Brandy. Come on. Yeah, she just needs to calm down a little bit. Um, can we get into our second player, please? Ed, this one's for you. Shoot. Can we give the Play a Please Award to the MTV Video Music Awards? Play I don't even know what... Someone asked me about a week ago if I was going to review it. And I was like, I'm not sure what even they would be... Do they even play videos anymore? Like, okay, well, let me... Break... Video Music Awards and they don't do videos. Uh, Well, let me break it down to you, Ed. The VMA Awards, they do the Video Vanguard Award every year to celebrate, yes. you know, someone who's made an impact with music videos. Well, it was rumored that Missy Elliott would be receiving it this year. But it's looking more like it's going to go to Lady Gaga. So, Oh, my God. Listen, we have been screaming for Missy to get that award for at least 10 years. I don't know. At this point, I think... And I don't know this speculation because MTV is not that stupid. So it would have to – is Missy saying nah? Like what's the holdup? Because Missy has not commented on this. So I want to know what the deal is because MTV is not stupid enough to continue to throw away the biggest female hip-hop pioneer in music videos since 1997. That doesn't make any sense. I think it's something up with that. Yeah. Uh oh. So, I I think Missy uh, deserves it. She's she's been a pioneer with her music videos for many many years. I mean, you guys are still watching award shows for real? Come on. Oh, here we go. Are you really? Tom, Tom, don't you have a break? Like these things are to go to. Actually, the Braves are playing right now, but oh. award shows. Who? When have they ever been accurate though? Since, like, the Prince days or something. Come on. They weren't accurate then. They were never they were? accurate. Oh. No, they were so never why accurate. Are we, so why are we getting all excited about it? Come on. No, we're not getting excited. But the point is, if someone is being, who has deserved an award for, I mean, decades, and it's still not gotten it, and they're giving it, and not to say that Gaga doesn't deserve it, she probably does, but. Come on now. Give Missy her flowers. Don't wait till the girl isn't here and then we crying and having tributes. Give the people the flowers well, so they can smell it. You saw how long it took them to, to uh, recognize Teddy Riley at the Soul Train Awards. I mean, true. And he started in the 80s. And it's like they recognized him in 2016 or 15, whatever. I mean, yeah, so, but Gaga was on. way after Missy Elliott. So it's not like, you, oh, they're going you, in order. You guys need to turn off the TV and just come on. These aren't turn realistic. Off the TV, shows. Go with you to a game, eat some unseasoned chicken. We got it. Well, no, I was going <laughs> to say play Nintendo Switch, Mario Tennis. That's a great game. Ooh, yeah, play. I need to get on that. <laughs> All right. And it All won't right. piss. Actually, it will piss you off because it's like a 
like uh, Bowser Jr. is like a cheat character or whatever. They found out he's more powerful than everyone else, so yeah, it'll piss you off if you play online and face him. Oh, see, that's why I don't play online because I do too much stuff <laughs> in my TV. What the hell is? Wait, what is going on here? We're supposed to be focusing on R&B. I got one more player, please. If you Missy guys Elliott, we, we love you. <laughs> All right. Man, there's so much love going on here. Uh, the last player, please. Can we talk about 112? They broke up again. No, they didn't. They sort of did. Where did Durant, they did? Slim and Mike did an interview at Essence, and they said that uh, Q and Duran are no longer part of the group because they want to do their solo endeavors. But well, strangely enough, Q and Duran do shows together still. So I'm It did sure raise some red flags when you sent me that flyer with just two members on it. I mean, that's big. Yeah. Yeah. Ed, you love 112. I do, but I don't know what's going on here. I think with we got the little Tom's Civil War with Player and Drew Hill, this is a real 112 Civil War. So I don't know what's up with that. They just got back well, together, man. They're beefing again. Can I speculate? Yes. <laughs> That's what you do. You guys remember when the album came out, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it didn't perform well. I mean, based on based on probably their expectations. So I'm going to speculate that they were unhappy with how it performed. They thought no one cared about their music, so they would like, or at least two of them were like, "F it, we're going to go solo again. It doesn't matter." I mean, it could be that simple. But in reality, shouldn't they take a page out of the other '90s artist book and say like? Let's just keep touring. People would pay money to see us tour. Let's just keep making money touring. I mean, look at they John B. Doing, has, they were doing John B. I, but jo- I, I, I know, them. but but like John B. hasn't released an album in like seven, eight years, and probably never will again. But he's still touring every every weekend. Like Drew Hill should just take notice. I mean, sorry, one twelve, just do it. I'm with you. But I, I mean, like there may be a hunger to release new music because they think they still got some gas in the tank. And they're like, oh, I got one more hit left in me. And, and don't get me wrong. You know, guys, you know, if you're listening, 112, Q, Mike, Slim, Duran, we would love to hear new music. But, like, just be realistic, guys. You know, this is 2018. People aren't buying music. So I'm just saying, Kyle. All right. All right. So, wow, that was a lot, guys. We 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 created rumors, we speculated, we talked. Our, we're just speculating. Was, we don't know what's going on. We're just speculating. Educated opinion. We All right. Uh, we have another special guest in the building. Like I said, every week we try to uh, bring in somebody that's brought soul back or just in general is in the culture of R&B and soul music. And, Tom, we have a special guest in the building, don't we? Yeah, this is a friend of mine who I've been trying to get on this podcast for a while now, for years, and uh, I got to know him pretty well when we were working at uh, SLBs on the Soul Village show together. We were both booking artists, kind of producing the show. He was the official DJ. Um, he really caught my attention when he had a Neptune's night one night prior to the show and some, like, Neo Soul stuff. So he's really, you know, one of the best DJs I've come across in New York. Glad to welcome DJ Urban Philosopher to the podcast. What's going on, guys? What's going on? I gotta, I gotta share this story. This we always have an icebreaker segment with every guest. I gotta share this with you. I don't know if you remember this, but my first encounter with DJ Urban Philosopher was me dissing him on Twitter, and, I, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I, I was, I was at a show he was DJing. I think it was for Marsh Ambrosius, and like I was yeah. like, this music is whack. Like, why is he playing turn up music prior to a, a singer coming on stage? So I was like, this is my this was years ago when I was young and, and arrogant and stupid, but I called him out on Twitter, come to find out the music was that type of music was being requested by Marsha. So deleted the Ooh. tweet, claimed claimed that was hacked, uh, you know, the whole thing, but <laughs> we ended up becoming cool over the years. Unfortunately I didn't I didn't ruin things from day one, but yeah, that was an awkward situation, but it all turned out okay. <laughs> That's our Tom. That is the most believable story. You were here all day. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it 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 was cool. I mean, listen, any feedback is good feedback, right? Whether it's negative or positive, uh, I 
hopefully this noise is not coming across to you guys because for whatever reason a cruise ship decided they wanted to like start honking the horn. Uh, <laughs> right at this moment. Okay, cool. But yeah, no, and then all feedback is cool. Yeah, it was a, that was a weird night, man. Uh, you know, it was, it, I, it was like one of my like first, first I guess major artist gigs, and I, we, you know, Marcia and I were chatting before the show, and she's like, "I need the energy up." I think that night she did two shows, so uh, I can't remember if that was the first one or the second one, but she's like, "I need to bring the energy all the way up," and. Tom, you know FOBs has like a weird energy sometimes, and you know we, I just like all right, well, well let's go ratchet, and then and of course in her British accent, which I will not do to not offend anyone, uh, she's like yeah, let's go ratchet, and I was like okay, all right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, so you know, it it was a cool night, but no, I mean listen, uh, whether it's it, it's positive or negative. Anytime I'm tagged on social media, it's awesome. Like I'm, I'm just so happy that I even got acknowledged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what was on this playlist? Because Tom's definition of ratchet is basically anything that came out after 2003. So what was on? Oh, this playlist? come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I I kind of agree with Tom, but yeah, no. Uh, Man, I can't even remember. Uh, I'm pretty sure there was, like, ASAP Rocky or, like, Future or something crazy. Like, it was, like, yeah. strip club music or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's trap, trap music. And, uh, yeah, I, she, you know, her set was interesting because, you know, I think this, I can't remember which album it was. It, it was so long ago. Um, but I think on that, al- on that, that album, she kind of pushed the the envelope, I guess, per se, like, with her audience and just kind of cursing on stage a little bit and just being a little bit more loose. And, you know, it was just, it was interesting. <laughs> good time. That's awesome. Yeah, it was definitely a good night. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and I, I got to ask you, and and we'll, 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 we'll all circle back to this, but, Ed, um, we talked about this boot up record by LMA so much, and uh, you work with the youth. Have they caught on to that record? Oh, let me tell you about the youth. They love some LMA, but what's even worse, they love the remixes even more, and that's what oh. makes me cry. Because <laughs> it's listen, as much as that song is being played into the ground, and as I've talked about here on the podcast and out elsewhere. That song is actually pretty old because that song was on our countdown last year. So that song has been out a while. And I'm glad that a kind of pure-sounding R&B song is getting a lot of love. But just when we start getting some solid R&B, guess who rises from his auto-tune grave, T-Pain, to make it all whack? So now that he's on it, everybody is like, oh, you've heard the T-Pain remix. And if you have the Yada Yada remix and this dude's remix, everybody is doing their own thing. And the song that was pretty okay but played into the ground is now taking on new life by all these other folks. And I'm kind of getting booed up, booed out. <laughs> and, Tom, you heard it at a gym on, like, pop radio, right? Yeah, when I go to the gym, it's all pop playlists. And uh, I actually heard it, believe it or not. I was like, at first, I was like, what is this throwback 90s song? And it was booed up, turned out to be, in between, like, pop and rock song. song. So it's just weird hearing it. I mean, I don't know if it'll lead to anything, like a resurgence of, of sorts, but interesting hearing it between, you know, electronic music and pop and, of course, hip-hop. Right. And then well, DJ Urban Philosopher, you know, you're putting together these playlists a lot of ratchet, a lot of turn up stuff going on. How do you fit a song like that into your playlist? Because obviously everyone loves it right now. <laughs> well, I mean, funny enough, you know, I, I personally wouldn't put a boot up song uh, in a turn up. I mean, I got to hear that song a good, a good while ago, and um, yeah. I was I was typically playing that song uh, sort of in the mix of like a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Mars Today. Uh, Khalid, um, uh, another artist, Chris McClenney, you know, I would, I would put her in sort of that box. Uh, however, I, you know, I was having a really good conversation the other day with a local artist 
And she was saying, like, how in the world does a song like Booed Up become this major phenomenon when it's one of the most simplistic R&B songs that are out there? And, you know, I, I personally don't have an explanation for it other than people like what they like, I guess. And, you know, these remixes that are out there kind of push those songs over the edge, you know. Hopefully I don't get kicked off the podcast, but I'm going <laughs> to defend T-Pain here. Uh, I get it. He's not the most vocal uh, artist out there. Actually, surprisingly enough, if you watch his NPR, Tiny Death, you will hear him without the auto-tune, and he's actually not that bad. Uh, oh, but, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other night, I actually played, so, and Tom knows I, I, I tend to do some themed uh, DJ sets sometimes, and I did a little T-Pain tribute, and T-Pain's got a lot of hits. Whether you like them or not, T-Pain's got a lot of hits. So, uh, you know, I ran through... I'm probably going to say 50 songs and folks were just like, I can't believe there was that many T-Pain songs. I'm like, there were. Yeah. There, I mean, yeah. how many people can rhyme log cabin with, with Canton or create a word like with Canton? <laughs> <laughs> who, who invited this guy to the podcast? Remind me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got to talk about that. I mean, listen, T Pain's got hits. I will never say he doesn't have hits, but look, people, play it. There are people that I know who like eating mayonnaise and pineapple sandwich. That doesn't necessarily make it a good choice. <laughs> people just do weird things. So Pain has Pain had his era. He had his era where he was hot and he was knocking out single after single. And he flamed out quickly because, and I don't want to get on a rant on this, but you know me and my rant. So there are eras where we can have this thing where we just ride it out and we ride it into the ground and then it becomes extremely passe. And I think a lot of people, there's a generation of fans that grew up on T-Pain. So now that he came back, they're like, oh, this is nostalgia. This reminds me of middle school and high school and yay. And I'm sitting over here like, it's the same garbage we were getting before, so glad y'all having fun with it. Let me go back to the original boot up. Okay. I, so, uh, hey, listen. Let, I'm sorry, not to cut you, but, yeah, let's talk about it. Because uh, um, the other the other night, uh, I DJ on Friday night uh, in Newark, New Jersey, so I got to plug it, uh, Blueprint Cafe. Uh, and, I, and I typically do a lot of R&B, Neo Soul, and someone – and you make a great point about uh, time or certain eras. Someone was saying that Neo Soul had its time. It had an era. I mean, I, what it do you is. guys think about that? It definitely had an era. If you look at, I think it was about, and I was just talking about this over at the Soul and Stereo Cypher on Facebook. It was maybe, it was late 90s up until early 2000s, around that Midnight Love BET era. Like, that's mm -hmm. kind of when it was at its peak. So late 90s, and of course that sound still peripherates today, but it definitely had its era where it was the D'Angelo's and Indiaris, and there was a sound, a production, and style that really pushed it ahead, the Jill Scott's. But like everything, it just kind of peters out. Music moves in waves. We're in the trap wave right now. I can't wait till we get to a new wave, but music moves in waves. Right. So then what do you do with these artists? You know, it, what do you do with a Dwelle? What do you do with a Jill Scott or a Eric Roberson or a, an Algebra Blessed? You know, I, if they were to start making trap songs, it's almost like, man, like, do we do we tap out of these guys now? I think Tom and I had a discussion there, uh, maybe a while ago with Tank. Uh, you know, Tank was a very soulful R&B. I mean, I guess we could say he was kind of neo soul. And now look what he's making with the When We remix with Ty Dolla Sign and whomever. Hmm. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll take that one. I mean, I don't think that you necessarily box in Eric Roberson and, and Duele and all of them as just a Neo Soul strictly. Like, they, they're, like Neo Soul is just a box they put on R&B music in reality. I mean, people like to put nice little boxes. Trap is a style of production that is like, it's either trap or it's not. You know what I mean? It's like, 
neo soul. I mean, R and B singers are versatile. They can do neo soul, but they can also do more traditional R and B. So I don't think that it's really an apples to apples comparison, in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. Well, Tom, we've had this conversation before, so I'm probably a little younger than the rest of you guys. And um, Tom and I have had this conversation when Tom was 18 years old or whatever age he was. He was listening to neo soul like it was just part of his regular day because that was a part of what was going on in music. I'm a little younger than you guys. So when I started to really get into R&B, neo soul wasn't at the forefront anymore. So like I personally can't even go back and listen to Joe Scott's music like you guys can. It just it doesn't resonate with me. So I don't know, Tom, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, it like an, exa- an, an example is like Anthony Hamilton. I was listening to Anthony Hamilton when I was like 18, 19. But like when you when you were 18 or 19, you could never stomach such a soulful artist like that. So it's kind of it's kind of a difference. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just kind of what we grew up on at the time. But I, I don't know how to really classify that as anything. So would you guys say that we're kind of going into a newer neo soul sort of era with artists like Ella and Khalid and Daniel Caesar and is that sort of like the resurgence? Well, I I wouldn't say that because first of all, I wouldn't necessarily classify those guys as neo soul because again, to me, we talk about trap having a sound. I think there is a neo soul sound and those, I wouldn't put them as neo soul. Maybe Daniel Caesar, but even that's pushing. But I think that what we're seeing, honestly, is a fan base that's growing up. And I think that all those fans that like the kind of auto-tune era are starting to kind of grow out of it a little bit. And that's why we're seeing so much 90s-influenced stuff start to come back because that's the stuff, oh, it's going to make me feel old. That's the stuff that their parents were listening to. And so now that the artists that they are kind of of their era are going back and listening to, they're like, okay, now this song sample Touch Me, Tease Me. I heard my mama playing that. Okay, I can rock with it. So we're seeing a different changeover. Again, the the sound is changing, and I think that's why we're having the hers and the Ella's and some of these other guys kind of presenting them for a sound. Jacquees and another one who is this a little bit more familiar, but is pushing away from it because that audience is growing up. They can't keep listening to this goofy stuff but for so long before it gets kind of like, uh, this is stupid. A lot of the no, kids I, that I mentor are, are huge Nicki Minaj fans, but now they're kind of like, eh, she's been talking about the same stuff for 10 years. I need her to talk about something else. So you have to evolve with your fan base, and I think these newer artists are trying something new, and some, if you don't, will be left behind. Well, Ed, I actually um, listened to an interview. So Scott Storch has been doing a bunch of press recently put out a documentary and one of the things he actually said and i found it really interesting he thinks that r&b is going to be the next genre to blow up after hip-hop and he cited this boot up record as an example and i mean two-part question guys tom you take a stab at this one first is there any validity to what he's saying and even more so than that with this boot up record do you think if Sierra or Ashanti made this boot up song and release it, it would be as big as it is today, you know, as opposed to an LMA who's a pretty new artist. Of course not, because it, it all, it's more about the, the artist. I mean, people look at Ashanti and say she fell off. She's too old now. So of course you're not going to mm-hmm. respect the record she put out. But also I don't really think this is going to start any movements either. I mean, you had LMA, he's been out for years now and still, she has one hit, one song. Like I can't I still I talked to someone last night, you knew one song by her and she's been out so long. But you have someone like her, H. E. R., who's been around the same amount of time, a little longer. She's got multiple hits and songs and projects out. It's like what what is what is next from it? Like why is there anything else going on? Like I still don't even know what she looks like. So I mean I don't see this as a movement. I mean it's like, to me it's like a one off. I don't know if you guys disagree. No, I don't disagree too much. And I've talked about before here that Ella's experience, her kind of this this boot up thing right now, I want it to be the turning point, but it's way too early to say that, y'all, because the reason why boot up blew up 
was really because it went viral online through stuff, and that's how it latched on to the audience. I mean, we hear, you guys know this, we hear songs like Boot Up all the time, and we talk about them all the time, and we talk about how great they are, and they go right over everybody's head because the audience isn't listening to all these artists. Because how many times has a Jasmine Sullivan or a Marshall or whoever put out records similar to it a thousand times better, but no one ever hears them? So this was an opportunity where it was a good record. It struck at the right time. There was really nothing else hot. It went viral. Boom, it blew up. But I don't see this. It could be the signal of a turning point. The only thing I think it signals is that the audience wants something fresh and new. And I think they're getting a little tired of these tropical songs and these auto-tune songs. So I think that's a signal. But I don't think that, oh, R&B is back, is going to de- this oh, hip-hop is dead. Like, eh, so y'all calm down a little bit. We ain't gotten that far yet. And to, Ty- and to Kyle's question, no, I don't think that if someone else came out with this song, it would have blown up because it had to be a fresh face. If it was an artist that was already established, Unfortunately, we live in an era of the fall-offs, and if it's someone who already did their thing, we'll be like, oh, they're old. I'm not listening to that. That's old. That's my mom's favorite. No. It's sad, it's trash, but it's true. It had to be a new face. What about you, Urban Philosopher? I mean, I hear me out on this theory. I, I You know, she's she's from the U.K., is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and then she came from social media, right? She was discovered, I think, singing on Instagram. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, so now, you know, that that kind of goes with the popularity talent thing. Not saying that she's not talented, uh, because I think she she sings very well, uh, but that I think that's where the popularity part comes first. And everyone kind of gravitates to this next thing. Now, I, I I don't know the full story of who gave her the endorsement, but, you know, that sort of catapults her into that next level of notoriety. And I, I think the same could be had for a lot of R&B singers. I mean, you know, you guys know there's so many local local artists who make great music, who have great projects, and unfortunately... They either don't go anywhere or they you know, they get maybe five states that will pick it up and listen to it and, and they have a little following. But or even even more, their song is featured on some B E T movie, uh and then that's where it just kinda of filters out from there. Um so can it be said that the the rapper endorsements and the Social media notoriety is going to help these artists move forward, and that's why we're getting all of this simplistic R and B. Well, um, aside from that, uh, DJ philosopher, or Urban Philosopher, tell us what you've got going on right now. I know you, you you've done a bunch of different things, but just tell us what you got going on right now. Well, um, I have actually transitioned out of uh, Soul Village. Uh, I was there for about 10 years. <laughs> Started out collecting emails and then um, for Eric Roberson and then ultimately became a part of the production team alongside Tom. And at any given time, I was helping book artists, host, and DJ the event um, all in the same event. So, it got to be a little overwhelming at times, but uh, I've moved on. So uh, currently striving for out-of-state shows, so anything outside of the New York City area. Um, right now, I'm hoping to move move a new venue uh, along, which is Blueprint Cafe over in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, it's a small, smaller venue. Uh, it's actually... Uh, ran by a good friend of mine and what we're looking to do is bring local artists or have a space for a local artist in the New Jersey, New York City area that doesn't have a minimum requirement for fans or uh, people to come so that they can perform, which is typically what seems to be happening uh, all over New York City. Um, 
artists would want to perform at a venue, uh, let's say BB Kings, right? We'll we'll use them as a uh, as an example since they're closed, right? Uh, if you wanted to perform at BB Kings, let's say they would require you to have a 50 minimum draw. Now, not everyone has 50 people that's going to show up to a venue, and that's fine. But you want to perform, and you want to perform in front of people who may help you move along. So that's what that's what we're working on uh, at Blueprint Cafe. Uh, other than that, uh, I still DJ for Eric Robertson from time to time. Uh, I think hopefully soon I'll be working with Deborah Bond and Algebra Blessed as they have some new projects coming out. And um, yeah, that's about it. You know, just traveling, traveling all over the country and spinning records and good R&B. Dope. So we got to ask you before you get out of here. Well, two two questions here. Number one, on your playlist, on your DJ set list right now, do you have the following artists in your set list, or at least let us know what is on your set list? But these following artists, Ed and Tom, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> we have Ashanti on the playlist. Yes. Mario. Adorn is on my playlist. Yes. Chris Brown. Uh, it used to be. I used to. I used to play Funny China a lot, Ooh. actually. Yeah. Why Ooh. is this? Even, why? Why is this even a question? Who vetted these questions it, that we're asking? Yeah, that's oh. I'm asking. When, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, what else? <laughs> and I, I'll I'll, I just, I'll defend I'll defend all of these in in one sentence in a bit. But go ahead. Who else do you have? Hold on. Scrap that. <laughs> what I'd really like to know is how you know you're kind of like my age, a little younger. How do you, you know, growing up in 90s music, how do you adapt to, like, the younger sounds and, like, still please the audience that's around you, even though you really might not like that music? Oh, well, I mean, so typically we try to keep it themed. And what I like is that a lot of the folks who do follow me are fans of music, just music in general. And, you know, I'll take it one step ahead. Instead of, let's say, just doing a, an all Jill Scott. We'll we'll talk about production parts of it. You know, um, we'll we'll gear it towards all right uh, this particular sound or that particular sound. So Tom was Tom was there for the Neptunes uh, tribute. Uh, I did a Dilla one. I've done uh, like I said. You know, you guys you guys hit me for it, but I did the T Pain one the other day. Uh, I did a Scott Storch one. Uh, I've done um, Tall Black Guy, um, you know, just, just kind of switch it up like that. Um, I'm actually working on a foreign exchange uh, that, uh, that I'm going to try out on Friday uh, since that the cafe is a little bit more relaxed atmosphere and folks are, you know, they, they're after work. They kind of just want to, like, chill and hang out. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I try to theme it and, you know, People are really starting to gravitate towards that. As far as the young folks are concerned, I mean, I think I think young folks kind of just like anything that has a beat or, you know, some type of bassy type of beat. Um, and I try not to go too cookie cutter. I try not to go too top 40, uh, you know, only because I mean, you hear that on the radio 10,000 times a day. Do you want to go to a venue and hear it again? It's kind of silly. Hmm. Right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Urban Philosopher, uh, appreciate you for joining us on the Soul Back Podcast. Now, before we let you leave, we got one more question. You can answer this question, and you will either get kicked out or you can leave on your own accord. Uh, who are you rocking with? Who are you rocking with? You think Soul Child or Keith Sweat? Mm, that's a good question. You know what? Music's a good friend of mine. I'm going to say I'm going to rock with music. I was just oh. listening to the Jump Listen album. So I got to go there. There we go. Well, <laughs> listen, player, you just admitted that he was a good friend of yours. I smell some bias here. I want to recount. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, listen, I have friends, and I don't I don't play their records. So. Oh. <laughs> Oh I, could, I could be shady. Yeah. I, I could be shady like that too. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I know what that's like. <laughs> Absolutely. 
But hey, guys, man, thank you so much for having me. You know, Tom's been trying to get me on the podcast for so long. I'm actually a fan of you guys. You guys are doing something really amazing for R&B right now. Uh, you know, T Pain, Chris Brown's aside, uh, R&B. <laughs> I Ooh. think R&B is probably <laughs> R&B is probably one of the, the 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 best genres that are out there. I mean, you really don't get other genres, and it, it doesn't stem back to R&B. So, you know, I I I'm not gonna take too much of your time, but I je- I definitely want to say, you know. Keep listening to R&B. Listen to honest R&B. There's so many great artists that, that are out there. Your music coach, Ozzy, Eric, Eric Roberson, uh, young guy, uh, very honest, Justo Ontario, really great artist that's coming up. You know, look for those guys, support those guys, and support R&B, and you know I got soul. Ed, what's going on with soulandstereo.com as we wrap this up? Hmm, what's going on with Soul and Stereo? Because it's been a minute. We already talked about um, the internet. Check out the site for an interview. I mean, not an interview. A review of Hive Mind, their newest album. I've got a breakdown of that. Also, I've got, I think it's been a while, so I think that there's a new Love Letters column that I haven't talked about yet. So go there and see what I'm talking about. Somebody's ragged love life, as I usually do. And other than that, just stay tuned for some new releases, some new albums. I got some stuff in the can, some collaborative pieces that I'm working on. So some are still hot. Nice. And, Tom, what's going on with, you know, I got soul.com? I heard that you're trying to find the group Portrait. Wait, what? I'm just kidding. Did DJ, <laughs> did DJ Soul Child hack our uh, account no, again? No, no. Now we <laughs> now Soul Child and Barry. You got some enemies today. Actually, Barry Barry will be back for an upcoming podcast, guys. Just saying. Yes, he will. Ed, are you are you One cool day. with taking the week off? I'm listening. I don't think every time I take a week off, there's a disaster that happens. I think I need to be anchored. Oh my goodness! Listen, <laughs> let's get, let's stay on track. Remember when we talked about Shy releasing an album that no one knew about? Yes, lower. Someone commented on our site. Brilliant CD. Definitely the distinctive voices make the difference to this musical piece. Love also the fact that they went on a different musical path than everyone else. No idea what's um, going on, but I someone say, commented on that. What does that mean? Someone wrote that on the site. That means the project well, is fire, guys. open when they type it? <laughs> <laughs> they could have just wrote I mean, fire. But... <laughs> the project's fire. That's what I'm saying. It's like the emoji with the flames. That's exactly what that means. All right, go, get it back on track. Now, we got nothing going on, Kyle. I mean, we're, we're waiting for Tamiya to come out at this point, and then Marsha. That's it in September. Yep. Um, well, we got Lloyd in July, July 31st. I mean, August 31st, oh. I'm sorry. Lloyd's coming out. Uh, Mario's yeah. coming out in the fall, allegedly. Uh, he'll be on the podcast in the coming weeks, like I mentioned. Um, actually, I might be interviewing Genuine for real next week. He's back in Vancouver because he doesn't yes. have residence tour um so maybe we'll get to speak to genuine maybe we'll get him on this podcast we've been working on this as well so uh we will see and then um i think that's all we, it for arm no week. all we need is for you to talk to sammy and that will be good everything will be complete sam, sam is still around give it a break you just put out come on come on come on uh <laughs> oh one one more tidbit for you guys before we gotta get out of here the uh next Jaquees single features Do- Donald Jones. It's that record. What twenty three? Radio. Yep, they're shooting I a music video. I love that song. No, that's if I picked another single, it would be that one. So good for him. Ed, I think that's the one you should Tom, go with. Donald Jones is back, guys. But he just did like some ad libs in the intro, right? Yes, that's yeah. it. It's not a feature for real. Calm down. Well, Jaquees is about to save R and B just like we are, so. Uh, on behalf of myself, Tom, and Ed, uh, we are out of here, right? We're out. We out. <laughs>